أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول وقول الأمر منكم and that and a reminder for myself and عبدك العجيز ضعيف ومسكين وظالم وجهل and by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence we took a path of nothingness and that Allah has rahmah to dress us inshaAllah we have for today the interactive Thursday for the tafakkur and the meditation. We talk today inshaAllah about the hearing, the importance of hearing and that everything that Allah wants to bestow upon the servant is going to be based in the schools of hearing. That they're going to teach us how to hear, how to follow an ihtiba, how to obey so that the reality of the ears can open. If the reality of the ears can open then Allah will begin to open the eyes, open the heart, open the breath, open everything and every qudra but it's all going to be based on the reality of the hearing is the first step. Without that hearing then it's the obvious, there's no discipline and any shaitan could be whispering into the ears of people and he is whispering into the ears of people. And that's why now you see everybody is preoccupied with their ears, their hearing and every type of device and every type of marking upon the ears. So the signs Allah describes, I show you within yourself but I show you upon the horizon. Upon the horizon is much easier than the self because it's evident everywhere. So when we look and we say, oh there's so much focus on the ears and hearing and ear pods and, and uh, ear, div ear devices and all sorts of markings because everybody's fighting for the same two ears on people. Shaitan is trying to go after them and Ar-Rahman is guiding creation that use your hearing for the Divine, inshaAllah. Everything is through the, the, the interactive, is through the internet, inshaAllah. So, that yeah, they'll so feed them. Basic question. Um, uh, Shaykh I, Sayyidi, I need to know what is meditation and how does it benefit? <laughs> what? <laughs> New person, probably. Okay. No worries, something. InshaAllah, Billah min shaitan bismillah rahman rahim Meditation in, in Islamic understanding is tafakkur, is to slow our lives down in which Allah throughout Holy Qur'an there are categories of rijal of these people, of, of people of realities, people of the book, uh, or people of the door, not the people of the book, ulul bab, there are people of the, the, the gate, the door. Ulama Ayman bil qist, they are the people of tafakkur. Well, Allah continuously making reminders within Holy Qur'an, none of you know but the people of tafakkur and says that everything is praising me and none can hear it but the people of tafakkur. So throughout the Qur'an Allah is making reference to a category of people whom they understood tafakkur. And then awliyaullah come into our lives and tafakkur is to slow down and to begin to contemplate. So this is not about making people to be Arabs but to teach the similarity in the Arabic words to our English understanding. So in English they call it meditating, to contemplate, to slow down, to to get an understanding and then Prophet described in his hadith that who knows himself will know his Lord. Again concept of tafakkur and Prophet described there are people whom their tafakkur of one hour is like 70 years of worship for someone else. So now he begins to describe the secret of tafakkur is so powerful that what they achieve through their soul, one hour sitting with them is like 70 years of another person's worshipness which means it's a lifespan. So one hour you sit with them 
you may be dressed by a lifetime of somebody else's actions. Means you go about your life, it's not even comparable to one hour of sitting and learning tafakkur with them. Means these are all these gifts that Allah want to bestow. And tafakkur is a huge subject that we have on the website, then go onto the new Muhammad dot com website and begin to study that understanding on how to slow down life, how to begin to meditate, how to understand to open the hearing and what my ears are going to hear, open my seeing, close what my eyes see from the outside and begin to see inside, what my nose is going to breathe of energy and qudra of what it's going to bring in of the holiness of this Divine breath. And if all of those functionalities are trying their best to submit for Allah then the power of the holy tongue. That through this tongue Allah will guide all of humanity. It means this is an inheritance from all of the Prophets of Allah What made them to be Prophets? Is that their hearing was for Allah, their seeing was for Allah their breath was for Allah and then Allah bestowed a grace and a mercy upon their tongue, some of which were just Prophets and others which were messengers, that they delivered the message of Allah through the purity of their faculties. So meditation is to stop, contemplate, open that reality. That's tafakkur, tadhakkir, tadhakkir is at a whole different level is now Allah even asking the people of tafakkur and contemplation and meditation, remember. Huh? Tadakkir is to remember. Remember what? Remember that I didn't just cre create you out of a vacuum and threw you onto the earth and your whole enjoyment was supposed to be the earth, no. You don't even come from there, you come from paradise. And I created your soul ancient. When was your soul made? Ancient reality for your soul. Alam al Qur'an, badan khalaq al insan. I taught your soul all its realities, and you promised me on the day of promises, wuqalu bala. I said, Am I not your Lord? And your soul said, Yes, you are my Lord. Do you remember that? No, that's our goal is go back to what you promised Allah when He created your soul and what He bestowed of His mercy, bestowed of His gifts, bestowed of all His realities He put upon the soul. Stop your busyness of your life, it's not going to be of any benefit in the grave. Use your body now to communicate with your soul's reality, find out what is it that you promised Allah. That's called your promise, your ahd, your covenant with Allah What was your covenant? The duty of the guides are to take you back to your covenant with Allah Not to take you to themselves but to take you to your covenant. How? By bringing the love of Sayyidina Muhammad teaching you how to meditate, contemplate, stop, slow down smell the fragrance, smell the roses, as soon as you begin to slow down then you who knows himself will begin to know the Lord, what governs you, what is your Rabb. Don't say your Rabb is Allah yet because if Allah was truly your Lord you could walk on water. What's really your Lord are all of the things in your life that govern you and push you and pull you and all your desires. So then this is the whole ocean of tafakkur inshaAllah. The one overall, how does meditation uh, benefit you in dunya and akhirah? <laughs> I think we just covered that in the yeah, first question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was all. It was all covered in there. That if if you can stop and slow down, you get to understand who you are and the reality of who our reality is. What Allah created us for. What is the blessings that Allah wants to bestow upon us? Anyone whom is seeking the reality of knowing themselves, no doubt Allah bestow His mercy and rahmah upon them. Means these are souls that become immensely blessed.
Because as they begin to know themselves, they know all their bad characteristics and they try to stop. As a result of getting to know themselves, they begin to witness what Allah wants them to witness. Means they're now headed in the direction that God wants them to head into. As they're heading into that direction, taking away all of their bad characteristics, Allah's rahmah and mercy dressing upon their souls and they become very blessed souls in dunya and especially in akhirah because we just described the akhirah. One hour of them is 70 years of somebody else's worship, one hour. So imagine somebody who's trained in tafakkur and meditation, real meditation not like the western understanding of people who sit next to a tree. This is about the people who go into deep into their reality and what they promised God. What their soul was promised and they reached a reality to be of service to humanity. If they're meditating their whole life, 24 hours of their existence is as if the 70. So you multiply 70 years times their one day is 1400 years of your years in comparison to one of these awliya who are specialized in tafakkur. One day. 1700 years you'd have to live to equal their one day of who they are. That's why Allah then described these are people, they are like awtad, they're like mountains. Why Allah described and why awliyaullah came and said, oh the awtad they're like pegs, they're like mountains. Well not only because they're firm into the ground and they stop the earth from shaking but because the mass of what Allah bestow upon them they're like mountains compared to other, other creation. Mountains in the barakah and the blessing that Allah bestow upon their souls. Just from the simple mathematics of what Prophet brought for us. One hour, 70 years. Somebody trained in tafakkur, all their life is in tafakkur. They don't shut their system off. Their system is continuously online and dedicated. Before we said there was login. When you had the first apple you had to log in 92 baht and wait for the computer to connect and get very aggravated in the house because it took forever to connect, yeah. Now what? Your live Wi-Fi full speed continuously going. It never shuts off, there's no more internet shutting off, there's not even logging on. You just hit your Wi-Fi, you're on. So Allah is just showing why. There are people whom their soul when Allah bestowed upon them, they're like a Wi-Fi, they're always on. Now they internally know how to shut their system off and how to turn it back on but their Wi-Fi is broadcasting. As a result 1400 years, one day with them is 1400 years for somebody else. So imagine you spend one day, two days, three days, five days, seven days, ten days or years with them. What, what their soul is bestowing of realities upon that stove, upon those souls. Allah you're always answering the questions before, before they come, always. yeah. <laughs> but similar, I guess a lot of people um, relate meditation to non-Islamic practices. So mm -hmm. they just want to know more of a connection between Islam and meditation, example. Yeah, you have to go back into about 1917, shaitan decided that his only way he's going to conquer this earth, truly conquer this earth was to take away any type of Rohani teaching, any type of spiritual teaching through all the dimensions. So the Islamic world from 1917 all the wars and all the governments that were put into place took away all spirituality even within martial arts all spirituality. Everything was taken of real spirituality was hidden. Shaitan wanted to hide everything of any type of spiritual practice. So then you look from 1917 pretty much everything. By the time Lawrence arrived in Arabia they completely hit all of the Sufi teachings, all which is the spiritual teachings. So very simple, at that time on earth that's what shaitan's plan was. Hit all spiritual teachings so that you take the soul out of it and leave a shell. So they just became empty practices. As a result of empty practices there's no spirit in anything people do now. When they talk there's no spirit in them, there's no love, there's no enjoyment in it. They talk about Islam in a very dry sort of manipulated or understood practice as if it's something empty. And all that is remaining of Islam right now is Jummah. We ask Muslim, what do you do for Islam? So we go for Jummah. And what else? 
What, what do you mean, what else? Everything is bid'ah. <laughs> what are we talking about everything? The, our life was supposed to be Islam. The beauty of Islam is like a garden. There should be continuous zikr, continuous praisings, continuous halakas and circles and teachings of reality. But if there's nobody practicing these practices, there's definitely no reality. That's why they just keep talking about fiqh. How many times you can make wudu, how is going to wudu going to be good, how wudu is going to be bad, how, how much water you have to have for the wudu, what negates the water of the wudu. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. Even now there's some channels in Pakistan that they, they talk all day long, 24 hours a day but no haqqaiq. So now what do they talk about? How to peel a banana according to the sunnah, which I don't think there were any bananas at that time. So it means they're making it up. So if you can't talk reality and there's no haqqaiq and there's no abundant fountain like a flowing fountain of the kawthar that used to dress all of the masjids because they were all Sufi. Those were fountains in which Allah was flowing of knowledges. They would do their zikr, their halakas, their teachings and all of their practices. If you take the fountain away it's just a, an empty shell. Leads to the next question. Um, a brother is asking, when I'm meditating and making zikr I smell a bad fragrance. Even I don't lose my wudu, Shaykh can you please guide me what to do? I have to sometimes stop myself from trying to be funny because <laughs> I have a sense of humor but… InshaAllah so the whole way is based on hypersensitivity so that anytime you're going to practice your spiritual practices every sense has a duality. There's hearing, they say, I can hear shaykh, I said, no but you, can you really hear? Means then you're going to train yourself on how to shut this hearing off, listen to salawats and begin to meditate. The salawats will pull you in the direction that you're supposed to be going in the meditation. Means they have a secret for everything. If you meditate without the sound we don't know where your soul is trying to go because the soul it knows exactly how to go back to Sayyidina Muhammad right? Like a ship, it knows exactly how to go, the direction Allah wants it to go. So that's why they come and they teach that when you're going to meditate, you first thing you do is don't meditate in silence and leave this like an open microphone. There's a hot mic, you're having a conversation with someone and they tell you, Shaykh your mic was on the whole time. It's like, good God, I don't know what I was saying because it was a private conversation maybe. Don't leave this mic on and sit, I'm going to sit in quiet, I'm going to sit by myself. Who, who, you're never by yourself, shaitan is right there. So shaitan just going to be talking in your microphone all day long. I got you, oh right, you're wrong. Oh. And you think it's like futuhats and, and, and knowledges and all sorts of wisdoms coming but it could be him whispering, whispering, whispering and then subtle throw in, oh you know what this person did to you? Whisper, 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 oh you know what this person did? So then they recommend, no, no, turn this system on to salawats. As soon as you're listening to salawat on Prophet your soul is like being mesmerized, it's feeling now an energy, you're meditating, trying to get your energy away and now release the energy of my soul. If you can relax yourself and meditate and contemplate, ask for the nazar of these awliya, ask for the, the presence of these guided souls to be present with you that I don't want to meditate alone my Lord. Wa sadaqeen, you promised that to keep the company of pious people I want to keep their spiritual company. So I'm keeping and asking for my madad that my shaykh is there present with me, I don't want to be alone and I begin to listen. As I'm listening to these salawats I'm trying to relax myself and let my hearing to really hear. If it begins to really hear the salawat and the praising you may begin to start to cry. Because your soul is now at a level of feeling, it's not only hearing anymore, it's feeling as if these angels and these recitations are reciting directly into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And then your soul will fly, fly into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad like the… As soon as you call with salawats the soul is moving, 
and you just let your body to release it and get out of the way, your soul moves into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Smell is of an angelic reality. As soon as you meditate and contemplate and bring your ears into submission, bring your eyes into submission, sit and close your eyes. Say, I don't want to close my eyes because there's too many things your eyes have been seeing. So again you discipline yourself to close the eyes and meditate, contemplate. Then you begin to open up the faculty of the breath. As you begin to smell and meditate and breathe bi zikrahu and you try to close off your mouth that not to breathe from the mouth but to breathe from the nose. It's like making a fireplace, you're going to now to learn how to bring the fire within your heart to ignite it. If you bring too much oxygen you're not going to ignite the fire. So if you <gasps> breathe with the mouth it's a different type of energy. You're going to learn how to lock your tongue to the roof of your mouth and seal your mouth and as you're making your zikrs with your breath. You're saying who in your heart and pushing with your breath out, exhaling and all the energy coming out. And then meditating, breathing in all the energy that you bring in with your breath. Your salawats are playing, you're asking for these Divine lights that you're in the presence of the shaykh and you're breathing, breathing. As you begin to breathe and practice the breath the sensitivity of smell should begin. So bad smell, good smell, bad smell, bad things, good smell, good things. Easiest way to understand, bad energy has a very bad smell that only they can see people, they can see souls, they can see the dead and they can smell them and they have really bad, bad, bad fragrance. That's why they need the area to be continuously put with bukhur and fragrances to compensate for the bad smell that people have put upon themselves by bad actions. So it means then every negative action brings about a bad energy. That bad energy has a bad smell. Every beautific action has a beautific fragrance. So it means then they do zikr, they do their salawats, they do their namaz, they do all the positive things, it brings about tremendous fragrances and beautific fragrances and brings about beautific souls and energies all around them. Those you may begin to smell musk and amber and all these beautific sandalwood, that these are the souls of the jinns, the, uh, the angels, awliya, they're all around releasing these fragrances and then again the negative ones that are around they smell like waste, they smell like urine, they smell like many different things because these are the negative beings and, and dirty beings that come around. So you have to clean your environment, beautify the environment, put fragrances in bukhurs and do your zikr, your meditation, your salah all in those areas, play salawats in the house continuously to push out any type of negative energy. The truth and the falsehood they don't occupy the same space. Anytime you find that there's a negative energy, negative smell you play dalal khirat in the house Put your bukhur, put your fragrances, yeah, inshaAllah. This is related, um, <clears throat> what if you're trying to do the breathing but you have nose problems, you get stuffed and now it's hard to meditate? So breathe through your ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, a, get, get a stuffy nose medicine. If you're not capable of, of that and there's actual medical problems then you breathe through your mouth, whatever you can do, not a problem. But don't, don't suffocate. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden say, I can't breathe, I'm going to pass out, hyperventilate, no. So you try your best if you can to breathe through the, the nostrils <laughs> and you can take some medicine to clear out your sinuses if that works. If not then if medically you can't then no problem, you can breathe through the mouth and maybe restrict your breathing. InshaAllah. Okay, so, uh
One more, one more, inshallah. Make it a good one okay. and then we close it for tonight. All of them were good. Thank you very much for people who asked the questions and thank you for those who didn't ask any questions. Thank you for, for, for Nabil who always has a question. So I found that missing hand towel. <laughs> they put my, my hand towel on the mic. <laughs> no other one, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon wa Salaamu Ala Mursaleen wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa wa Basir Surat Al Fatiha. Always remember that from this holy month, Surah Al-Kahf, the 18th Surah of Holy Qur'an, try to read the 18th Surah especially in this month to understand the adab, the understanding, the reality. If you're trying to accompany and find out how I should operate within a tariqah and a shaykh, Allah give the example with Sayyidina Musa a Prophet of Allah and Sayyidina Khidr who's a awliya of Allah and the whole adab and the understanding and etiquette and mannerisms that when we read we understand. In a nutshell of what experience Sayyidina Musa had and the continuous argument with Sayyidina Khidr it gives us an understanding of our lives and how Allah wants us to behave, how Allah wants us to take our tariqah and take our path and that whatever we see within the shaykh doesn't matter what understanding or how much you know the shaykh. Whatever you see in the shaykh is not the shaykh but it's actually a reflection of your own life and your own self. When Prophet described that a believer is a mirror to a believer, not just somebody who came into Islam only but Prophet is talking about a, a mu'min, somebody who reached maqam al-iman they become a ayna, they become a reflection. And anytime you have an interaction with a mirror, it's not the person that you're seeing, it's only yourself that you see. And Allah one of its understanding wanted Nabi Musa to see that. Whatever station you think you are, I'll send you to one of my mirrors, be careful. And as soon as he appeared in the presence of the mirror, he had a tremendous difficulty dealing with it. You know, why, why you destroyed the boat? Why did you build that wall without a fee? And wh why you killed that little boy? And the whole time arguing and, and forgetting that Allah sending you to a mirror. So he thought he's, he's going to find a problem with Sayyidina Khidr This is a reminder for myself and all the people watch, no matter how much you think you're interacting with the shaykh or whatever you think your relationship is, they're teaching that one who spoke to Allah was sent into the presence of a mirror and every test he objected to, what's that, what's this, what you doing? You know how are you doing all these things like this? And thinking that, oh I'm finding something wrong with this person, Allah sent me here to find something wrong with Sayyidina Khidr, said, no, no, you asked for the knowledge, you asked for the path, Allah just made the, sh the, the, the awliya to appear. You, if you didn't want it, he wouldn't have appeared. You asked Allah for a, of a rushd, of a higher understanding. The words in, in the Qur'an when Nabi Musa was saying, rushd, I, I want something of a higher understanding. I want to reach to you for a higher understanding, let me accompany you. So it was a way in which to look at your life. It was the life of Sayyidina Musa's life. It wasn't for him to identify Sayyidina Khidr's life and now to test him and qualify and quantify him. So the whole time he thought he's testing Sayyidina Khidr but forgot his realities. No, I thought you wanted the reality and in the end Sayyidina Khidr said, okay me and you this is where we're finished. That boat your mom threw you in a basket, you objected to my boat, your mom threw you in a basket. You objected to the boy thinking I harmed him. But you hit a man in defense of your people and you killed him. And you objected to the wool but you were the one who took water out to get a wife. 
I was showing you your life. Allah is through Sayyidina Khidr saying, I'm showing you your life. Do you see it? And that's when Prophet is teaching, Wa Rasul Anbiya, the awliya are, are inheritors of the reality of the Prophets of Bani Israel. He sent a reflection, a Muhammadan reflection to Kalimullah and it was his own life that he was going to go through these steps to understand. It wasn't Sayyidina Khidr's life that you're going to find problems in and same with these awliya, it's not them that you see. Whatever is you don't like, it's actually yourself and you only see yourself and whatever testing comes is played out from your life. And that's a deep reality that we all have to sit and continuously make tafakkur. What is it that Allah want me to see from this experience? That it's very deep and it's very real and it's my Lord wanting to bring something out of myself to identify it. Because everybody gets lost in the relationship, no, no, this we were talking about this, this is why that test came. So no, no, no. This is a mirror and that shaykh is a mirror and you're merely looking at a mirror. Everything you don't like that's going to come out on this test, it's all about you, inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.